Hi everybody, this is the final boss when coming to you from PAX in Seattle. The, the Penny Arcade Expo is, is upon us. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm not wearing my typical shirt and tie and suit. Uh, and it's because I had a whole bit planned where I was going to be cosplaying as Knack and kind of goofing around. Uh, and that didn't, that didn't work out so well. I made a real bad costume. Uh, so what's happening today is I kind of had a change of heart. I want to I want to do some good with this show. I want to uh, do something positive uh, with it because a lot of a lot of game companies, uh, small developers, pay a lot of money to be seen at PAX. And uh, why not show them off? Why not go see them and give them some attention? Uh, so today's segment is called Short Lines. Let's get started. This segment's called Short Lines. Yes. And it's in the Indie Mega Booth. There's never a line that's more than like two or three people long. Everything else has huge lines. There's just lines behind us. The Indie Mega Booth is the most fun at PAX. Would you agree with that? Of course I agree with that. I think that I think that's an accurate statement. There is so much to see here. And we kind of built the booth in such a way that whatever your preferences are, whether you like indie games or not, there's going to be something interesting in here. And that's why we always keep the Mega Booth right here at PAX, at like between the big AAA games, so that even if you know nothing of indie games, you can walk over here, see a game that you like, and get lost in all that Indy has to offer. Uh, Moonlighters is a 1950s heist adventure game. It's about a group of entertainers who are kind of like the Rat Pack, who get pushed out of the spotlight when rock and roll becomes the cool new thing, and so they resort to kind of pulling heists to get even. We have brought a lot of games. We've brought Ridiculous Fishing, our iOS game. We've brought Gun Gods, which we're releasing for our birthday tomorrow. We've got our upcoming project, Luftrausers, and we are bringing our latest project, Waste and Kings, of which we are live streaming development uh, as we make it. Well, our Mellow is a multiplayer board game, basically, but it's a card and board game, and it's on digital platforms. So we're trying to bring board games to life. It's up to four players, and you take control of a hero of one of the four clans of our Mellow, and they're all vying for the throne. Aaron, what is Gravity Ghost? It's a physics platformer with a twist in that you can orbit all the way around little planets, like Little Prince style, and you're collecting stars and weaving your way through the galaxy. There's no killing, no dying, no way to fail, just kind of enjoying the gravity, floating around. You're trying to find your little fox friend who ran away. Dragons of Atlantia is a multiplayer shooter. That's an aerial shooter where you're dogfighting with dragons and the riders atop them. There's a dragon with his missiles on his back? There is. He's our behemoth dragon. He's one of our largest right now, and he has a big pack of missiles on him. So it's Lifeless Planet, and it's a third-person action adventure, but it's sort of an old-school, sci-fi, almost Twilight Zone type story where you travel to this other planet light years away. When you get there, however, you find evidence of prior human habitation. Soviet-era Russian town, abandoned, deserted. You wonder, was my mission a hoax? Adventure ensues from there. Rimmed Capsule. Will you say the name? You're better at saying it than I am. Rimmed Capsule. <laughs> So I call it a meditative space strategy game. The scale is a first-person reality manipulation game. Uh, it sort of tries to reimagine exploration in games with a, a unique resizing mechanic. You can scale objects up and down in a very unbounded, free kind of way. The structure of the game is not like Portal, which everyone wants to compare it to. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. And uh, it's, it's much more inspired by Mario 64 or Banjo-Kazooie or something like that. Alright, so Dragon Fantasy Book 2 is a very 16-bit era-esque, like, Japanese-style RPG, JRPG. It tried to take the best of all of these Super Nintendo era, like Final Fantasy 6, Chrono Trigger, Lufia 2, and just really take some of the best games that we grew up loving and put them all, take the best parts and put them into one game. We didn't sit down and go, hey, let's create Catan meets Civilization and then throw Magic the Gathering on top <laughs> or anything like that. It was, let's try and make a game where you can create stories with your friends but it has this magical sense of adventure that super special feeling that you get when you're like 100 hours in an RPG and it's all you think about I love hearing you speak about this game <laughs> thanks I, I think about it all day every day even probably when I shouldn't be so it's like I have a lot of time to go over this stuff in my head what does the word indie mean uh, so the way that we handle it on our submissions and we say do you consider yourself an indie developer an indie developer is one that always wants to do their own thing. They want to make the games that they love to make, that they really just want to get out there into the marketplace. They don't need 300 people working on it to make it a reality, and they don't just follow the trends of the market. 
Well, it, it's true. It's like the kind of thing where if you can't get passionate about what you're doing, it's going to show in the end product. And we all love RPGs. Like, this is what we do. We love stories. We love diving into it. So let's take the best parts of games, because these are the parts we liked. Let's take out everything that we disliked. Let's make sure anything that annoyed us gets fixed, and hopefully other people will like that too. You can't really say indie is a genre or a style of game. It's more about the people that make it and their philosophy and the way they look at life and the way they don't really seem to believe in competition, but more in collaboration. People making games because they love making games. In my mind, I think of it as having the freedom to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. You're doing everything on your own terms. Anybody can do a great concept. It's just like, it's super risky, right? And since we're working on a smaller scale, we can make these sort of weirder types of games and find our audience at places like PAX for people who like really, like when I'm out on the aisles talking to people about it and I pitch it to them like really quick, like 1950s heist adventure, half of them would go, no thanks. And half of them would go, dude, that's exactly what I want to play. With everybody in the indie scene, cares deeply for what they do, because otherwise it's an awful idea to be an indie. If you're going to be an indie and you don't care about what you do, please go find a job or something, or do something else with your life, because if you don't care for what you do, you're not going to survive. And that is it! That is my day at PAX! Or three hours of a day anyway, I didn't get that much time, but uh, I hope I did enough with it. That's the thing, is after this day, um, coming in, I was like a little nervous to like st step into the indie scene, because I'm not very familiar with it, to be honest. And I was a little scared, and I thought I'd have to be like really assertive and ask people things. And uh, instead, people asked me to go talk about their games. They were, everyone there was excited and, and, and passionate. And you're talking to the people who are making those games there. You know, I, I, don't, I don't actually get a lot of those opportunities. Some people at like Game Drillers do, but you know, I'm not used to that. And so that was really fun. Uh, and you can go do that. That's the thing: is is you, a regular person, can go into the indie game mega booth thing and talk to the people who are making games and are passionate about it and want to talk to you. And I think that's what's fascinating about it. And that's, I honestly think it's the most fun place at PAX. And, I, and I'm very grateful to talk to as many people as I did. I felt bad. There were a lot of people who, who wanted to talk to me and I couldn't because we didn't have enough time. And I feel bad about that. Uh, so uh, if you're at PAX or any of the PAXs of the world, uh, go talk to the indie game people because they want to talk to you. Also, <laughs> go play indie games because they're great. They're fascinating. They're original and unique. And uh, not all of our games are those things. So it was really nice to see. Anyway, that is the episode for this week. I'll be back next week. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. And stick it up your trophy, cause we're gonna win Battle of the Bands for sure! Yeah! Oh, hey son! Yeah, Dad? Is that girl still in your band? I'm right here. Well, not anymore. Uh, do you remember that boy who went off to study abroad in Finland? Well, he's back, and he's gonna be your new lead singer now. Get rid of her! Dad, wait, what? What? Well, look, I, I, I know it sounds scary. But listen, he's, he's a really nice guy, and also he, he joined a band while he was in Finland, one that used to be pretty popular, and then he kind of ruined it completely. Also, th there's a bunch of rumors that he might become your mom's new boyfriend. Hey there. What is going on with this band? I mean, seriously. It's like all these things keep happening, and it's almost like we're going to be too good! Hey everybody, we're gonna win Battle of Man's for sure! Yay! Yay!